Yo guys, what's up? Phil here. Let's talk about wedding photography gear. So I get asked all the time about what I carry with my wedding kit. I'm about to show you. All right, let's start talking about kit. Bring in my first bag, my Low Pro, Pro Tactic 450. This beast goes everywhere with me. I've got pouches on the front, flashlight, you gotta have the, the tag. Anyway, let's get into the actual inside of the bag. Let me make sure I'm squared up here. All right opens from the back which is really nice I know that no one's gonna pull it open from the front into it first off and foremost this camera I'm shooting with the 5d mark 4 from Canon it's got C log it's great for video but it's mainly for my photography so but that's the one that's filming I have on there a Canon 24 to 70 uh, 2.8 lens filming so that won't be part of this gear kit, but it does go in here for my weddings. Next up, we have the, come on, focus, 7D Mark II that my wife shoots with, and a really great stills camera, especially for the first kiss that happens really quick sometimes, and you need to be in burst mode and capture 14 frames a second and capture just the right moment. So it's a great camera for that and it does really well in low light. Let's go over to lenses. I have the 24 to 70 that I'm filming with. I have a second 24 to 70 from Canon. This is the uh, version two, 2.8, that uh, we decided to go ahead and get two of them because we never knew when one of us was going to need it and or both of us need a 24 to 70 at the same time we went ahead and picked up two of them and uh majority of the day that's what i shoot with is a 24 to 70. during the reception now i'll move over to this lens the mighty mighty 70 to 200 2.8 version 2. this lens is a beast it weighs 6,000 pounds um which is about two elephants and uh, you're definitely gonna get an arm workout carrying this beast around all day long. But it does yield incredible photos and just the bokeh. You can't say enough about that lens. Next, the Mighty 50 1.2. Now this lens is a very specialized lens. It is almost too sharp. Um, now at wide open, it's gonna be really hard to nail focus at 1.2. So I usually stop at around F2. It's really hard to nail focus at 1.2, but when you do, oh man, oh man, the background just gets obliterated. And uh, it's a great wedding lens. I highly recommend it if you have the means. Next, we have, one second, there. Next, we have the 24 millimeter pancake lens. This is a really fun lens to put on the 7D Mark II because not only is it 24 millimeters, which is really nice, it's just about a 35 millimeter equivalent, but it's a really good macro lens. I can get up really, really close to ring shots, to the detail shots, to the flowers, to whatever I need to get really, really close to. Next lens. I throw in here a 10 to 17 millimeter fisheye just for the reception. That's really the only time I'll ever use it and I may take 10 photos with it. It's from Tokina. It's a great lens. Um, I've never had any issues with it, but it's just, it's super stylized. And like I said, I may only use it for 10 shots just to get some really fun ones during the reception. Now that covers most of the camera gear and lenses. That's actually all of the camera gear and lenses. What else do you need for uh, wedding photography? 
backups. You need backups on backups on backups because gear is never not going to fail. Batteries. Lots and lots of batteries. I have 10 of these Canon LPE6 batteries that we bring with us because we never know when a battery may die, it may completely short out and you're done. So you always bring extra, extra batteries, extra memory cards. I carry with me this low pro little pocket rocket from uh, Think Tank actually. Holds all my memory cards. I have a bunch of 64s and a couple of 32 gigs. I also have all my CF cards on the back side. So a good way to tell if you've shot on this, say, say you just got done with this card and you're done shooting with it, what do you do with it? You stick it back in here face up? No, turn it around. It's got nothing on the back side. That way you know that you've shot on that card. Do not put it back in the camera and format it. Speaking of memory cards. So one thing that we sell to our clients is the security that none of their photos are going to be lost. We do everything in our power to make sure that we leave with at least three copies before the night is over. Because nothing's truly backed up unless it's been backed up three times. So, each of our cameras shoots on two cards. It shoots on one SD card and one CF card. So we each have two backups immediately. So throughout the day, we will change out the cards. We'll break up the day into getting ready. We'll break it up into uh, the details of the day, the, the decorations, the, the venue, stuff like that. We'll, and then we'll do the ceremony and then we'll do reception. So we break up all those moments in the day into separate cards. So what do you do with the cards? You stick them back in there, right? No. I just picked up this DJI Copilot. It's a portable hard drive that has a battery built into it and SD card slots. So when I'm done with a card, all I do is slip it in there and hit backup. You know, it takes, you know, 15 minutes to back up a single card. And the entire time, I just throw it back in my bag while it's backing up. That way, at the end of the night, I know I have three backups of the entire wedding day. Nothing will get lost, nothing will get damaged. A set of cards goes with me and my car. Another set of cards goes with Lisa and her car. And then the hard drive with the DJI Copilot goes with the bag. They go, they're split up, none of them are in the same, in case something happens to one of them. So what else do I keep in my bag? These little anchor battery chargers. They're great for charging your cell phone, for charging anything that's USB powered. So we have some lights that are USB powered. We have um, a couple of accessories that are USB powered. I've got a couple of these. I've got a larger one and then I've got a smaller travel size one, but they both go with me everywhere I go. On this side, this side of the bag, I have a bunch of cables. I've got audio cables, I have data cables, I have um, a bunch of just accessories for this stuff. Stickers, got a bunch of stickers here that I always give away. So if you, uh, you want one, let me know. They're great, they look great on the car, they look great on your forehead. Business cards, always have a bunch of business cards with me everywhere I go. Moving on. out of the way all righty mighty pelican case with all the obligatory stickers from all the gear that I use here we go this is what I call my flash box I have a bunch of these Canon 600 let's see where, 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 oh. bunch of these Canon 600 EX flashes. I've got actually 
I have six of them. And yes, if, before you ask, I do use every single one of them during a wedding day. So having six of these beasts allows me to do a lot of things. During the reception, we set up two or three of them all already over by the DJ. They have colored gels on them. They're ready to go. All we have to do is switch over to the channel that they're on and setup is done. The other two, one will live on my camera, the other will live on Lisa's camera. Now these, cool thing about these, they're not just a flash, they're also a trigger. They will talk to each other. I can control one with the other. I can control the power level, I can control the zoom on it, I can control the mode even. I can set up several I can set up several groups of them and control two of them at the same time or have one my A, one is B, and the other is C. Control them independently. Now, if I'm doing some off-camera flash and I don't really need a on-camera flash at the time, I've got two of these, these triggers from Yan Nuo and they control all the flashes as well. I have two of them because backups, backups, backups. So all the flashes already, before I go to a wedding day, are fully charged. That's very important. Keep them fully charged right before a wedding day. Go ahead and load them up. I never keep batteries in my flashes for longer than a day, because I'm afraid that they're gonna start leaking and then they're just destroyed. You might as well throw them out. So I put them in the day before and everything's ready to go. All I have to do is put it on a stand, turn it on. I've already linked everything to my triggers and to my masters. So moving on to batteries. The only battery that I trust is the Enelope Pro. These batteries will last me, if I'm conservative that day, I'll, I won't have to change batteries. So these batteries go in all my flashes. I have a extra charger that you'll see in a minute in my accessory box but those are the only batteries that I trust. I've got an extra tripod mount in case I, I lose one. I have a bunch of Magmod gear. This Magmod gear is great. I've got the little grids. I've got the gel holders. I've got all the gels that they make. I've got the effects. I've got cooling gels, and I have a bunch of color gels. I use all these color gels for receptions. Depending on what the bride and groom's color is, I will generally tailor my flash color to that. So up here in this little compartment here, I carry extra light stands because you never know when one's gonna break or get lost or stolen or whatever. I carry a bunch of extra of those there. Over here, I keep paperwork, I keep the contract, I keep a bunch of just business stuff inside here, extra cards, because I never want to go without. So that is my Rolling 5001 Pelican case. Moving on to the accessory box. You see everything's got my sticker on it, because it's cool. All right, accessory box. It is a jumbled mess. Like I said, I use a lot of Magmod gear. Magmod gear has sped up my workflow incredibly. The quality that these diffusion and modifiers produce is absolutely incredible. It's such a game changer. It's so quick to go ahead and change a modifier because they utilize these magnets here. All you do is stick it to your flash and you're good to go. There's no more zip ties, tape, none of that Gary Fong stuff. You just stick it and go. This is the MagSphere, really good for nice soft light, bouncing upwards, it just nice fill light in the room. We'll put these on our reception lights so it floods the room with whatever color gel that we install at that time got four of those. The other Magmod 
modifier is, I can find it, is the mag bounce. Mag bounce, think of it as a bounce card that goes right in front of your flash that directs all of the, your light forward. That way, it's not just a small little source of light, it's a much broader source of light. It's a really beautiful light, great for catch lights and eyes, great for floating light on a wall, and just overall ease of use. And no, Magmod is not paying me yet. Magmod, reach out to me. Other things in my accessory box. So battery charger. We'll take batteries out of our flashes and immediately go into the charger to start charging. Because you never want to go without. We have a couple of slings for our cameras when we don't want to hold them anymore. I have a GoPro mount and I'll explain that in a minute. I'm gonna set that aside. I've got a bunch of Canon or LP E6 battery chargers because as soon as we're done, they go right on the charger. Last but not least, I have this Aperture Armin ALM9 little mini handheld light. It's a little LED bright, bright light and good Lord, is it bright? It's, I mean, check how bright that is and it's battery powered. So this is really great for when we're doing the detail shots and I need a close-up shot of a ring. I need a close-up shot of flowers. I just need that extra little pop of light. That is really, really handy. Other than that, I've got a card reader for when, you know, maybe our client pays the day of, they pay the rest of their deposit day of, and all they have is a card. So we have this little portable card reader. Um, extra batteries. I keep a, a set of Duracell extra batteries in here just because you never know. I never know if all of my rechargeable batteries decide to just stop working. Oh, back to GoPro mount. The reason I have a GoPro, one second, let me grab it, it's charging at the moment. I try to, I don't promise it, but I try to mount my GoPro, which I have the, I don't know which one this is, the Hero 7, I think. I mount this somewhere at the altar and put it in time-lapse mode and I attempt to get the first kiss from that point of view looking from the other side of the bride and groom out to the congregation to the audience. It's a very very cool look. It's extremely difficult to pull off because it takes a lot of coordination from the venue from the officiant as well. Because nine times out of 10, the officiant is standing right there in the middle. And if the officiant doesn't remember to move out of the way during the first kiss, I've got a thousand shots of his back the entire time. So we attempt it, but we never promise that shot. It's a really great shot. And if you're not doing something like that, you need to. Your clients will love it. So that kind of wraps up my photography gear. Other than stands and stuff that are kind of boring, I carry a bunch of other mag mod stuff. I've got the big, the big mag box. I've got two of these. Um, really great. Same idea as the mag mod stuff is you just stick it to your plate. Very, very simple, quick setup. And in the wedding industry, a quick setup is a good setup. Nobody would like sitting around waiting on whoever to finish setting up other than stands and stuff that's it guys um i don't travel with a crap ton of gear but i do travel with moderate size of gear um, so one of the big takeaways from this you should be getting is your backups make sure your footage is backed up before you leave somehow bring a laptop Make sure your cards are backed up before you leave because there's no worse feeling in the world than getting home and accidentally erasing or formatting a card that has a very important shoot on it or a wedding or whatever. So I hope you got a lot out of this video and if you have any questions please leave a comment down below and I'll answer as best I can. And uh, as always guys it's a pleasure and uh, get you one of these stickers because your photography would be so much better with this sticker, trust me. Clients will love you 
your mom will probably love you more if you have this sticker. Bye guys.